Hey, Paul Griffin from Gator Grooves, my drum studio in Florida. Um, I'm going to talk today about basics, drum stick, uh, stick bag basics and cymbal bag basics. Okay. What every drummer should have, like if you're playing gigs and bring, bring with you. Okay. You got to think of this thing as like a woman's purse. It's got to have all the stuff you need, like in case of emergency or whatever. But, um, uh, I don't think, I don't think any of our, um, bandmates, you know, other people who play other instruments, other musicians that we play along with really know all the stuff that we have to be responsible for and, and bring to the gig and make sure we have to make our instrument perform right or to, to make us perform right. So, so anyways, this is just a little, um, video today talking about stick bag basics. Okay. So I'm, I'm opening up my stick bag. Like I'm going to play a gig. Um, I got to get my hi-hat together here. I'm going to, um, angle my camera down so you can see, kind of maybe see what I'm doing. So you can see, I normally come in when I set up my drums and I'll set up my bass drum, snare drum, hi-hat, and then toms, cymbals, uh, in that order, kind of. Um, once I get the drums set up, then I'll get the cymbals in place. Um, put the hi-hat on. Um, hi-hat clutch. Okay, so if you're using the same gear all the time, you have a hi-hat clutch that you know works with your hi-hat stand. Sometimes you can put it right on, this, on the rod and keep it there. Um, that's cool to do, but sometimes they fall off in the car or when you're transporting your hardware. And that's a real pain when you, you realize you don't have a hi-hat clutch. So anyways, I'm opening up my cymbal bag. Let's see what we got in here. Uh, first of all, large cowbell. Um, never know when you're going to need that. You know, the cowbell, more cowbell joke. You know, you can never get away from that on the gig. So a uh, roll of gaffer's tape. So if I want to mute up any cymbals or drum heads, drums while I'm on the gig, got some tape. Oh boy, a small cowbell. I don't always carry two cowbells, but just to have it. A lot of times um, if I don't have a place to put one, the small one's easier just to set on a tom or floor tom and play it that way. Um, I've got a uh, one of these uh, snare weight uh, mutes that I love to be able to add to my to snare or any toms to uh, dampen them a little bit, take the ring out. A drum key, gotta have at least one on a gig. Um, and here's my cymbal sizzler, my fancy, really expensive 20 cent cymbal sizzler. It's two dimes on some snare string and I simply wind it around symbol like that. Add some sizzle. All right, let's dig further here. Oh, uh, percussion, percussion, percussion instruments, sound effects, uh, rattles. Star rattles, speaker. Uh, a lot of the gigs I play on, I mean, instead of playing a standard beat, a lot of times, um, people are so appreciative, other musicians are so appreciative if you're going to play a groove and instead of playing the hi-hat, you, you play a shaker. Okay, so learn how to play shakers. It's like the, the most used percussion instrument out there, but it's... It, it can add so much texture to uh, a feel or a groove. So let's see, I'm looking for a hi-hat clutch. I got 
I got one here. Okay, that, that fits. So it's a good idea to have a multiple selection of hi-hat clutches. A lot of hi-hat stands have different size diameter rods. So you gotta be prepared. Once in a while, if you're not using your equipment, you get to a gig, it's got a hi-hat stand with a fat, with a really fat, wider um, rod, and you can't put your hi-hat clutch on it. So then you're, you're out of a hi-hat, actually. So I, that's actually happened to me before where I ended up playing, putting like my second hi-hat cymbal like that. And, and doing that just to have a hi-hat. So, or you can actually put it like that. But you don't, you don't have any you don't have any sound control of the hi-hat then, it's just dead. And my left foot like is dancing all night long on the hi-hat. All right, so anyways, yeah, I got, I got a bunch of hi-hat clutches. My favorite one is my Tama, which has a cool quick release uh, feature on it. So it's, it's even quicker than the, the screw apart kind because it takes time to do this, you know. Um, I love stuff that saves time on the gig. So anyways, put that on there, put the pad on below, put put that in on, and then, yeah, just a simple slide over and it's locked in. And you want a good, you want good hi-hat clutches. They're worth paying a little more dollars for uh, to get decent ones that hold tight to the rod and that don't loosen as you play. Because that if they loosen as you play, you're always having to, having to re-tighten them on the bottom, okay? Okay, enough of that. All right, anyway, oh, egg shaker. Sometimes it's easier to pick up an egg shaker and use, especially if you're playing with sticks. I happen to have my set of spoons in here. That always that always gets uh, people smiling when they wonder what the heck that sound is, and they look over and you're playing spoons on your leg. All right, what else we got here? More snare weight mutes for toms. A chain, if I want to add a chain to my snare additional sizzle on the cymbal. Um, felt pads, okay? You, you always need these, especially if you're playing on someone else's kit or a house kit, and you get there and you end up, you have a cymbal sand. Now I use these um, no nuts, which are great because you don't have to use wing nuts on top of your cymbals or anything. They're tall enough that your cymbal stays there. I love these things. Um, and they make for very quick setup and tear down because your cymbal comes right off and on quick. Um, so a lot of times you get to the gig and you get this. And it's like, okay, what am I, I'm not putting my cymbal on there to wreck my cymbal. Um, so so I, I always carry um, some cymbal accessory hardware with me. Um, mini tambourine. I can put that on my hi hat. A pair of sunglasses if I ever want to try to look cool. Um, I carry these with me. Felt pads and the actual nylon sleeve that goes on the cymbal stand. So when you get to a gig where the stuff has been abused or taken and it's not there anymore, you at least have a backup. What else we got in here? A pen. All right, pens and pencils are great. If you're rehearsing, you gotta have them. I always have one in my cymbal bag, one in my stick bag. Um, it, it's nice to have, even if even if you're not doing a paper, like chart reading gig. I mean, if, if the band leader says, hey, do this here, write it on your drum head, you know. 
Um, and believe it or not, I have some lyrics written on my drum head because I sing and occasionally you forget lyrics. So there you go. See on my Tom Tom. All right, so that that empties out my cymbal bag, the front of my cymbal bag, where you're supposed to keep the hi-hats. I actually keep all that junk, and, and that just gives me security um, for when I get to the gig. I know I have this stuff, and I'm not going to be looking for it. Half the time, the band wonders, what, what are you back there digging through that stuff for? What is what's in there? All right. And then my, my cymbal bag, I always bring more than I need as far as cymbals. Yeah, you, you choose the cymbals you want for the gig, but I always find if I'm disappointed with something, it's nice to have a backup of a different sound. Uh, so I usually bring way too many cymbals and I break these cymbal bags because I, I load them down too, too heavy. All right, anyways, let's open up the stick bag. What do we got in here? All right, so I'm guilty of always overloading these bags too. I do the same thing with my stick bag where I can't even close it with the zipper. So anyways, all right, open this up. I got a, a whole bunch of different sticks in here and a lot of them are the same size, but a lot of them are not. So when I get to the gig, I'll try to sort through them. You can see I got some, some really nice mallet sticks, which I love for single swells. have that at your fingertips to be able to play mallet mallet stuff as well as cymbal stuff um, for different textures I've got some big big broom type brushes okay. um, I've got the hot rods or whatever you whatever they're called multi rods yeah um, so a lot of places if you're playing and you want different textures I, I like these I like using sticks and brushes and multi rods and brooms and stuff for for the different sounds that they make to me they're not a volume control answer learn how to play soft Okay, if you're playing rock and roll, like I play, I play a variety of musics um, from soft inner jazz, where I'm playing no more than like maybe two inches off the drums and cymbals. Um, and yes, that's not slamming out like backbeats and it's not playing occasionally, you know, we may be called to do something louder or something that has a backbeat to it. And there you need to learn to play controlled enough so that you can get the feel across, but you're not playing too loud. now where I'm playing we're playing loud, louder volumes in in rock and roll clubs and that but um, for many years I played acoustically in in places like dinner clubs where I mean there's a there's a there's tables of people really close to me like as close as the other musicians in the group so So learn to play at a controlled level that is appropriate for the venue you're playing at. Um, and then you don't have like other band members or, or the leader of the band or the manager of the club saying, hey, can you play with brushes? Because 
the general public has a misconception that brushes and hot rods are a volume answer to drums, to loud drums. Well, they're partially, they're partially right. Yes, they're louder. I'm sorry, they're, yes, they're softer, but you can also play just as loud with the, the uh, with brushes or hot rods and that to get intended effects. Just because you're playing with brushes doesn't mean you have to play soft. Same with the hot rides. set of uh, marimba mallets in here which are are kind of cool because you can get nice cymbal and tom-tom sounds soft playing. I like these American Custom SD5s by Vic Firth. They're really small tip, really weird shank on them. You can turn them around and actually play really beefy with the, the butt end of the stick because they're thick at the end. But they taper really, really gradually to a very small bead tip. And I actually have, if I have to play really, really soft, I've got a set of these that the tip's been worn down enough where they're they're super soft. So I mean, they sound super sweet on the cymbals. So and then I've got my standard sticks that I use the most, the the um, Vic Firth SD4 combos. It's kind of a it's kind of a, I would say it's a lightweight stick. I don't like heavy sticks because um, I like the agility of them. And yet they're, they're enough where you can get, if you want to get a beefy sound, you can on the drum. Too. All right, what else we got in here? 
Uh, I actually have a pair of these uh, kids sticks. They're Vic Firth, like kids, little kids sticks. And I like using these just for fun sometimes because they they actually have kind of a bright sound to them, but the density is interesting because I think they're oak, but the density is interesting that you can get pretty cool sound with them. So those are those are fun to use. Anyways, all right. In the in the little pocket here, I've got uh, another drum key. Um, another felt pad. I've got a tuning key for uh, actually for some uh, of the uh, Remo percussion drums. It's actually the same size as a as a drum lug so it'll work for tuning drums it's also handy for some of the stools that have a lock ring on them and monsters who tighten those things down um, in clubs and you can't change the seat height because of that so this is a great a great wrench with a lot of leverage a lot of turning torque leverage for you to be able to loosen and tighten those all right, oh, we got the side pocket. Side pocket is in-ear monitor uh, ears, monitor earbuds, and a long extension cord so that if I need to get to an amplifier, uh, um, I use these a lot with different groups. Um, some, some bands don't use them. Some use like regular old school um, PA monitors. Um, but it's great to have a set of in-ears that you can use. I've actually got two sets in here um, and the extension cord. Uh, church gigs, you gotta have them. Um, those go with me pretty much everywhere my stick bag goes so that I always have them. A light, uh, a stand light. Now this is like a book light, so it's not a great light source, but it's bright enough to to shine if I'm if I'm playing a, a big band gig or a gig where I need to read read music, I can mount that right to the I can mount that right on the music stand. It's like a clip light. Um, that's a must have if you're doing any big band reading or chart reading. Uh, in the bottom here, let's see. Oh, hey, another hi-hat clutch. I've got probably four or five hi-hat clutches just in my bags. Um, and another drum key, these ever-elusive drum keys. I got some in my car so that if I forget to put them in my bag, I've got them in my car. I can always run out to the car and get one. But uh, that's it. So yeah, that's uh, a lot of essentials and a lot of stuff to have on the gig, but it's what I it's what I use and what I like to have with me to give me a feeling of confidence when I get there. Um, so I hope this video helps anybody out there um, just with what to have with you on playing gigs, and uh, you know, have a always have a good selection of different sticks and brushes and implements to play your instrument. And I like being, being prepared and having more than I need, you know, cause I always find, especially playing different situations, um, when you add the little shaker, when you add the tambourine, that it's the little things that people really appreciate, you know, 
and and then they call you back. They say, you know, oh, he, he did a good job. Let's let's call him back. You know, so all right. I hope that helps. Um, please like my video and subscribe. I appreciate it. And um, have a great day. Oh, and I got this shirt, this this cool cat drumming shirt from one of my students. Um, that's another thing. I, I try to go a little extra with my students. I, I don't schedule my lessons um, 30 minutes back to back because I, I hate rushing kids in, rushing them out. And it's like, okay, you're done, bye. If A lot of times I'll be not quite finished at the 30 minutes of explaining something. And just having a, another 15 minute time buffer in there is nice. So I can finish the lesson, feel like I've completed the lesson and my thoughts, and then let them go and have time to bring someone else in and not affect the uh, lesson time times at all. So, um, and apparently my students appreciate that because they give me cool gifts like this. So it's one from one of my favorite students who, who really appreciates the extra time I spend with them. All right, take care.